So we've just arrived at uh, Seal Rock North down on the Oregon coast and it's a little bit blustery. The waves are crashing. There's some really, really aggressive winds. It's quite cold. So what I've done today is I've gone for a new look because the appropriate footwear that I usually wear, well, let's be honest, I'm going to catch a cold if I, if I don't just put something a little bit warmer on. So I, I think that this is a really attractive look. I'm sure you'd agree. <laughs> is that your new vlogging rig? Yeah, you like it. What, do, you, do you like it? What's the audio like? Oh, fantastic. Is that what this is for, this giant thing? Yeah. That's, that's the, that's, that's <laughs> that's the, the windsock. Where are we going? Down here. Slow motion was actually invented so that boring clips of, let's say, four clueless vloggers crossing a road could actually look cool. Now on this trip, we decided to hire a cameraman and I was delighted to discover that he was even more accident prone and clumsy than myself. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Greg Snell. Oh, you okay, Greg? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> All right. That's what I was saying. My it's goodness, dude. Right to... Not a single one of us stopped to help him when he tumbled. We are all too bothered worrying about our cameras. Vloggers. What a bunch of cunt. He would later be named Greg the Destroyer on account of how anything that he touched would have a tendency to randomly explode. But he was worth every penny, as you'll soon see from some of the epic B-roll that he shot during this trip. There's a link to Greg's channel in the description. Now, our first glimpse of the beach resulted in photogasms all around. Even Uncle Grumpy was drooling at that light. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I put my lav mic on because the wind is ridiculous. Uh, but this is so different to when I was here a couple of months ago. Look at this. This is all sea foam from this aggressive wind, this storm that's coming. In fact, I don't know if you can see it, I'll, I'll get a closer shot. But way off in the distance there, that massive cliff, one entire side of it is covered in foam <laughs> from the waves crashing in. It's quite amazing. So with all of this calamity, I reckon I could probably get quite an interesting foreground. And way off in the distance there, you can see those uh, gaps in the clouds where the sun's poking through. We've had giant rays of light, it's absolutely fantastic. And these waves crashing in, I mean, it's, it's, it's somewhat sketchy. We're gonna have to keep an eye on it. But this is that perfect storm light that every landscape photographer craves because that's when you get color, contrast and dynamics even got a rainbow off in that direction so we're all super excited let's get over there and get shooting oh my god oh <laughs> wow what do you think nick we got wet sand here we got epic skies more foam than i've ever seen <laughs> it's, it's a foam party i know it's like christmas only a little bit smellier <laughs> awesome a few seconds of arriving on the beach I found quite a nice composition and the light a couple of minutes ago was was just unbelievable and what I've got going on here is dead simple I've got this this really lovely barnacled rock as a foreground element and I, I like it because you've got all of this foam that's running around the edge of it as well as these little tiny sand patterns towards the bigger reflection and then of course the, the, enti the entire sea stack which is reflected in this beautifully wet sand and then those spectacular clouds in the distance. But I, I still can't get over that entire cliff, 
that is painted white, just whitewashed with foam. So that tells me that the waves were crashing a bit further in about an hour or two ago and they must have been high because just look at that and you can see these beautiful spirals of foam just just it's like snow going upwards because uh, it's just getting blown upwards so i'm going to try and get over there and get some uh, slow motion footage of that it's quite quite a hypnotic effect but uh, yeah this this vertical comp is quite decent i'll uh, i'll show you how that turned out And having shot on the coast for quite a long time, for many, many years, but especially recently, we've been out for the last few days on the coast with this really raging wind. One thing I've learned is to always keep your camera bag on because you can just kind of ditch it over there, 20, even 50 feet behind you and try and get a bit of comfort while you shoot. But that is, is likely when the big waves are gonna come in. And you'll, you, you'll, you won't remember that your bag's still on the sand until you see it. <laughs> So you see it floating off in the distance so as much as it uh, pains me to keep this ginormous clamshell stuck to my back I'd rather suffer that than see it disappear um, another thing that I'm doing with this shot I mean I'm just I'm just continually shooting in fact let me just change my exposure a little bit just underexpose that a bit oh wow look at this look at this just magic oh here comes that tide I was talking about Another thing that I'm doing with this particular shot, because the reflection is it's kind of an important part of the composition, I'm not using a polarizer. I've removed the polarizer, and that is making sure that I uh, get the maximum amount of reflected light bouncing off of that wet sand. It really doubles up the color in the frame. So whatever color you've got going on in the sky, it's nice to have that also reflected or echoed in the bottom of the frame and I've gone for a, to be honest I've gone for a very obvious composition normally I wouldn't just slap this right in the center of the frame and reflect everything equally but the reason why I'm doing this is because of that reflection and because of the action that occasionally comes in so as the waves come in and go past my feet as they recede you get these beautiful patterns of foam in the sand so I want to feature that as well so in this case I'm actually just doing, going for a fairly obvious composition and just whacking the C-stack, slap bang in the middle and let everything else around it make the composition more interesting. Oh, that light is fantastic. So I don't know if you can see, if I, if I just point you over there, draw your attention to this foam that is blasting into the air because of the, the wind. Look at that. Look at that. That's like a, a, an entire whirlwind going on over there. Uh, it's quite difficult to capture on the stills camera because uh, with an aperture of f8 I'm only at 1 20th of a second so I actually need to open up the aperture just for now I'm going to go down all the way to 2.8 and that will allow me to shoot much faster apertures so ISO 100 I can now get to 125th of a second and try and capture that uh, that motion of that that spiraling foam as it blasts up into the air like snow flying in the wrong direction there we go so let's just see if i can capture that that's what i'm trying to do because i mean yes i've got beautiful light yes i've got cool waves and everything but to see foam doing this is it's, it's quite the phenomenon for me anyway so that's what i'm going to try and capture in my shot oh there we go look at that i don't know if you could see that and that was a much faster shot one 250th of a second let me see if that captured it yes it did i managed to get uh get the spray flying up. So I'll try a few more of them and I'll choose the best one that gives me the biggest plume of airborne foam. Brilliant.
so I came over to this spot to see what Nick was looking at and while I was here about two minutes ago the tide really came in and it created this really interesting foreground as the foam very very slowly receded leaving these big fat long streaks leading towards the big rock there so I thought I'd set up a shot and try and wait for that but of course as always happens you know that those big waves that came in have, have faded but I, I know one will come back what they say every seventh wave the big wave will come back so I'm just gonna oh look at that absolutely amazing ah oh, so beautiful now we've got waterfalls we've got waterfalls sea stacks well the clouds aren't mega right now but they were good earlier and waves coming up but it, it's got everything what are you getting uncle good stuff <laughs> classic typical now of course it always goes that wherever you're shooting you can guarantee that the best light will be in the opposite direction got some nice pink clouds over there some contrast but I, I'm, I'm still going to hold out a little bit of subtle hope for this light to light up where we want it and I've been here a few times before I've never seen light like this and we're very very lucky that we've got this when the four of us are here because um, I don't think Adam has seen this before and definitely Thomas has never seen this so for him to get light like this waves like this I mean look Ooh. at this this spray it's just unbelievable and this this foam it's like being at a giant foam party on the beach for him to get this on his first visit I hope he realizes how lucky he is I know that I I feel pretty lucky right now oh, oh that's gross get it off <laughs> Well, it looks like that is the best of the light. But before I go, I thought I'd share with you one very simple but very effective tip. So I'll switch to this camera and I'll show you exactly what I'm seeing through the viewfinder and you can see how effective this is. So if you see this shot that I've got here, this composition, it's, it's kind of interesting because you've got the sea stacks there and I like this lovely uh, line that comes into the foreground there. But I feel like this needs to be exaggerated a bit more so if i get closer and lower to this area there'll be a little bit less of this middle area i can magnify that and fill this space by getting lower so let me just show you what i mean so i'll just get closer and a little bit lower now and that makes this whole puddle much bigger it's it's a, it's a more aggressive and distorted shape which i find more interesting and i feel like that leads you in a bit better to the scene and imagine if we were getting some gorgeous clouds right now I am going to stick around just in case it does light up I don't think it will but simply by crouching down and getting closer to that foreground object you can really emphasize that foreground and minimize the slightly more boring area well definitely not the best image of the day but I thought I'd show you just as an example so why were the five of us touring the states well you can learn all about our secret f4 project by signing up to the f4 mailing list at f4roadtrip.com there's a link in the description below now i thought i'd finish this video with some behind the scenes footage from the project just to give you a glimpse into the horrors and hardships of life on the road with f4 oh Tom, have you got some of those earplugs I could borrow? Uh, no, I thought I had more, but I haven't got any. And then there's the button plug. <laughs> Did you bring your button plug? It's already in. <laughs> I've just gone out of bed after 17 minutes of sleep, and uh, I've come into the, the trailer of hell. And these guys are trying to tell me that I snore. Like, pretty rich words coming from Uncle Grumpy telling me that I snore bad. You do, you, you do. I don't believe it. It, it, just, it was horrendous. <laughs> they can't... I've never heard it like it. Well, that's because you can't hear yourself when you snore. But your snoring is like... Tom was saying at one point there we were in sync. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm inside what we've affectionately named for now the murder box it's our rolling meth lab which is our photography studio for the next three weeks and um, what what Nick has here is what is it called a scuttle? 
He's got a scopple, which is a really good kind of, almost like a tall frying pan that's usually used for cooking outside. But for some weird reason, he's cooking inside the murder box right now with zero ventilation. And uh, it's getting a little bit uh, fragrant. What I've got going on this side of the scopple is, is Tom is... <laughs> Lighting a... Is this a gas fire? It's a gas fire, yeah. The gas fireplace inside the murder box. Uh, this this cannot be sanctioned. Well, hang on, because we've got a carbon monoxide alarm, so it's all fine. It's oh, oh, right, so we're all right, then. We don't, have, we don't have a smoke alarm. So where I put <laughs> it... would be going off big time right now. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm getting drips off. I'm not entirely convinced that I'm going to survive this uh, evening in the in the murder box, but we'll see. It might be in one of these drawers. Yeah. Th this is like the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> There's some Blair Witch shit going on right now. Where did I put it? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to open that door. It is open. Oh. <laughs> well, not really. There we go. Let's rewrap this one. I, I can't work under these conditions. This is not acceptable for a, <laughs> a professional production. <laughs> a, a star of my calibre. I'm just sitting here, mate. I'm not even, not even getting involved. So yeah, it's all good. What do you think of Greg so far? Oh, he's he's absolutely brilliant. Because I'm Canadian. He kind of makes us look a bit amateur, doesn't he? <laughs> he's very pro so. he's very professional. Mm. I uh, yeah, I wish I had as much. Um, energy and enthusiasm in filming as Greg does. Yeah. 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 Me too. <laughs> well, a bit older. He's only a young whippersnapper though, eh? How old are you? 33? Uh, 24. Oh, you just had a rough life then. Yeah, hey Gavin. Yeah? What? Hey Gavin. Can you see me? Greg, where are you? Right here. Gavin. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Right. Damn it. I knew camera was a bad idea. Greg? Uh, there is nothing we can do Filming you, filming me uh.